What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix and today I'm bringing to you guys a guide on probably one of the funnest things in the game which I find most enjoyable and that is Darok PKing. It is probably the funnest type of PKing in my opinion. Pure PKing is a lot of fun but most people risk like 20 or 30k when you're fighting pures. So Darok PKing is super intense since the stakes are so high. A Darok set is worth 2.5 mil plus along with the Dragon Boots and the Barrow's Gloves, the risk is at least 3 mil. Let's get right into it. So there's actually some pretty high requirements for Darok PKing, but this video I intend just to teach anybody that wants to learn how to Darok PK and basically the mechanics behind Darok PKing. So the requirements are not required, but they're highly, highly, highly recommended. Otherwise, you're at a huge disadvantage when you're fighting anyone in the PvP worlds. So the first thing you need is level 94 magic with the completion of Lunar Diplomacy for the Vengeance spell. And this is definitely needed with Darok PKing. So Vengeance recoils 75% of the damage that they deal on you back to them. And on top of a ring of recoil, you can actually stack it up to 90% depending on what they hit. The next requirement or recommendation is 99 strength. Almost every single Darok PKer has level 99 strength. You can get 95 strength and still be really effective, but the super combat potion boost is going to be 5 levels higher if you have 99. The next thing that you must have is 70 defense and 70 attack to wear the full Darok armor set. Monkey Madness is highly recommended if you want to be risking a bit less with the Dragon Scimitar, but it's obviously optional since you can use a whip. The Barrow's Gloves from Recipe for Disaster, the Fire Cape and the Dragon Defender are super highly recommended because they're the optimal items that you should be using for the highest possible bonus when fighting. So judging from all these requirements, it's pretty obvious that Darok PKing is only for main accounts. I'm gonna soon make a pure guide for PKing soon, but I still need to train my pure up just a bit so I can get some clips. So most Darok PKs are at the northern part of the Grand Exchange on PvP worlds. Since this isn't the deep wilderness, you can keep your Fire Cape and Dragon Defender on death, which makes these two items a must. A spec web like an AGS or Dragon Claws is super useful, but a Granite Maul works equally as well and is cheap and really powerful. So Darog PKing can take a little while to get used to, so I'd recommend trying it with a friend in the Jewel Arena or at Castle Wars or something before actually heading to the PvP area. Now this is my inventory and gear setup. Obviously everybody's is going to be a little bit different, but the current setup that I'm wearing is the main Darok setup that you'll see on a PvP world with the Granite Maul and the Abyssal Tentacle. In my inventory, I use a Super Combat, obviously, and then I have the three types of runes for Vengeance, Death, Astral, and Earth runes. I take 200 Earth runes and 100 Death and Astral runes. A teleport to house in case I need to get out, and then if I get killed by poison, I still survive in my house. And then you also need Karambwans, one Guthix Rest Potion, and the rest Sharks. You also obviously need a Prayer Potion, and I bring a Sara Brew and a Restore just in case I get piled by a Rusher or something, I can just spam click that. So now I'm going to go through each of the tactics which Darok PKers have to know. The first thing is you should always stay above 60 to 65 hit points because Darok can hit well above that, but staying at that level means you're not a safer and you're always kind of safe. There's a few eating mechanics with the three foods that I mentioned in my inventory setup that you should really know. So the three foods, Sharks, Karambwans, and Guthix Rests. You're able to eat a Shark, then a Guthix Rest, and then a Karambwan all in the same game tick. So this is really useful if you get smacked down to below 10 hit points. So when you're a bit above 10 hit points, a Shark and then a Karambwan also works in the same tick. And if you're above 40 to 50 hit points, a Shark will do just fine. The second mechanic I want to talk about is the Darok set effect. So basically when you use the Darok's axe, the amount you hit on your opponent depends on your current hit points. So if you're really low on hit points, you'll hit really high. 
But one thing that you need to know is Darok is super inaccurate. So you'll be hitting so many zeros and then you'll whip out a crazy number like a 70 out of nowhere. The number you hit also depends on your total hit points. So people with level 99 hit points hit the absolute highest in terms of Darok. So the third thing that I want to talk about is timing your vengeance. You should always have vengeance active before you start fighting and it takes 30 seconds before you can use it again. So when you're timing your vengeance, it's really smart to use it just before you use your axe or your special attack. One more thing which is important is to not only watch your own vengeance, but your opponent's. You can minimize the effect of his vengeance by not using special attacks or the axe while he has vengeance casted. You can also use this to your advantage actually, in a sense that you can venge the millisecond before he's going to use his special attack or the axe. That's pretty hard to judge, but essentially if you get it right, you can rebound his massive hit and then provided he doesn't kill you, you can instantly hit him back with your own special attack and kill him. As I said, this is really hard to anticipate when that's going to happen, but it is good to keep in mind. Something that really helps with the timing of vengeances is to set up your hotkeys in the RuneScape settings. It's completely up to you what you want to set them to, but I prefer the old RS2 style when I'm PKing. With hotkeys, you can right click things like vengeance or your special attack and then go back to your inventory so that you can switch things much more efficiently. Another useful thing is with the granite mall spec, you can right click the granite mall and then go to your special attack screen so you can switch really fast to your special attack. The fifth and final mechanic that I want to talk about is hiding your special attack. So the best way to do that is to have a prayer potion or any other potion that doesn't reduce your stats next to your special attack weapon. So the split second before you switch, you take a dose of the potion and then switch to your weapon and use the special. By doing this, you hide the fact that you're about to special and it looks like you're eating. So that way your opponent isn't going to eat and is just going to keep attacking you. And then you can swiftly whip out your armadillo god sword or your granite maw or whatever you're using. Another cool thing that I like using, which I saw in another video actually, I forget what video it was, but you can use Diango's claws in the fight to basically distract your enemy. And most people don't really care. They think it's pretty funny. So it's pretty fun to use them and just spec them out of nowhere. So it's a lot of fun to use. The thing with the Diango's Claws is it doesn't restrict any game ticks. It simply doesn't emote over your current character with the Dragon Claw spec while still dealing your own damage. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about Darok PKing. Obviously, putting all these together requires a ton of practice. So don't go into PvP areas as soon as you finish watching this. So whether you're watching it for the interesting information or you're really about to go Darok PKing, I'd like to thank you for tuning into this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more awesome old school content. I've been uploading daily content now, so if you want to get daily RuneScape videos in your sub box, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I was going to try get an example of a few high risk kills, but as you can see, I just got messed up for my primordial boots there. So I gave up shortly after that. Anyway, guys, if you do want to see high risk videos, be sure to leave it in the comment section because I do really enjoy those fights a ton and would love to make a full high risk video for you guys. Thanks for watching.